Greetings and salutations, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be making a tier list of all of the different weapons in the finals. So I'm going to start off with the light weapons, and we're going to start with the V95. I'm going to put this either in S tier or in very high A tier. The reason I would put it in S tier is because if you're very, very good and you can hit a lot of your shots, this thing can absolutely delete enemies. Its drawback is that it doesn't have much range, and its main drawback, in my opinion, is that it's semi-auto, so it makes it a lot harder to keep your aim consistent when a gun is semi-auto. It's a lot easier to do with full auto. But if you're someone that's used to using semi-auto weapons and you can keep your aim on track while using them, this is probably going to be S tier. It does do a lot of damage, especially if you hit those headshots, and its fire rate is very, very fast. It's also got a nice reload speed as well, so it's probably S tier worthy. And if you're not so used to semi-auto weapons and you can't consistently be firing as fast as you can, which is quite hard to do, then it's probably going to be A tier. I I'm not a fan of this weapon so much, it's only level 1 for me as you can see, just because I find it a lot harder to keep my aim on track when using semi-auto weapons. But again, if you're someone that can do that, then it's probably going to be an S tier, so I'm gonna leave it there because I think it is quite, quite good. So next up we have the two SMGs, the XP-54 and the M11. I'm going to start off by putting the XP-54 in A tier. All around, decent weapon. Nice scope, got a scope on it for extra accuracy. Easy enough recoil pattern. Nice magazine size, nice range, nice damage. All around, just a solid pick. And then I'm going to compare that to the M11, because that's the other SMG in the light class. And this is either going to get very low B, like over here somewhere, or it's going to go in C. And the reason for that is the XP-54 in most situations is just going to be better. And the M11, you only want to really be using it at super close ranges, which if you're playing as a light, you, you can make that work. So if you're playing as a light that's using like evasive dash and you really want to get up in people's faces, you could make this work as an A tier weapon, or maybe like a high B tier weapon, I'm not sure if it's worthy of A. But I'm going to put it in C because I think for most scenarios you're going to find yourself in, the XP-54 is just kind of, kind of overshadow the M11. So next up is the LH1, and this is kind of similar to the V95 in the sense that it's another semi-auto weapon. It basically just has more range than the V95 and more damage. So if you're someone that wants to be fighting at longer ranges and you want a high fire rate, high damaging weapon, you should probably pick the LH1. And if you want a, the same thing but in closer ranges, you should probably go for the V95. LH1, if you can hit your shots, is pretty solid. It's got a lot of camera shake on it, which does make it a bit hard to use. But if you can get over that and get used to that, you can turn this into a killing machine. It is quite powerful. So next up, we have the double barrel shotgun. And I'm going to put that in B tier. And that's because none of the shotguns in this game have headshot multipliers. So that's going to go in B. It's also because it's a shotgun and, you know, it's a very close range weapon. So that's one of its drawbacks. And also it only has two bullets in it. So you're going to be reloading a lot of the time, which sometimes isn't ideal. But it's also not C or D tier because it does do a lot of damage, so you can make it work if you can really be hitting all of your shots and be very good at maneuvering around, taking cover while you're reloading and stuff like that. You can make this quite viable, but I think if you're someone that can hit headshots, then you should probably be picking a different weapon and that's probably going to be more effective than the shotgun. Next up we have the SR-84, the sniper. If you're someone that can hit headshots very consistently, this is probably going to be S tier. It can one-shot lights. It's very, very strong if you hit those headshots. But I don't think I'm going to put it in S because I think it requires a much higher skill level than the V95. So it's just going to get a nice, nice cozy A, I think. But it is a solid pick only if you can hit your shots, though. It's a very punishing weapon all around, but it, it can get the job done. So next up we have the dagger and the sword. I'm going to put the dagger behind the shotgun and I'll put the sword in front. By the way, whatever is on the left is the best in the tier. Whatever is on the right is the worst in the tier, just so you know. So I'm putting the dagger at the very right of B because it kind of, its effectiveness kind of depends on how good your opponents are. If you're a light running the invisibility and you're trying to get behind someone with a dagger to one shot them, then how consistently you're going to be able to do that, it kind of depends on how good your opponents are. You know, it depends if they're going to hear you coming or be able to see you while you're moving, while you're invisible, and stuff like that. And also, if you've got the evasive dash and you're trying to use it, then they're probably just going to put their back to a wall if they're good, and if they're not, then hey, maybe you'll get a kill. 
But I think its effectiveness does quite heavily depend on how good your opponents are, so that's why it's going to be low B and not an A or S or anything like that. The sword is kind of different with the sword. It's quite good if you run it with evasive dash. You can also make it work with the invisibility. If you just get up in people's faces and start whacking them with this thing, you can definitely make them panic, and it does do a very decent amount of damage. So that's probably going to be a high B tier weapon. But again, if you can hit your headshots, then it's probably going to be worth picking something else, and it will be more effective, since the sword is only a close range weapon, and obviously it has no headshot multiplier. But it is definitely a solid pick, and, you know, you can make the dagger work as well, but the sword's probably going to be better than the dagger, in most cases. So that's it for the light, and now we come to the medium. So first up, we have the AKM. That's just going to get an A tier for me, because it's just all around very, very solid weapon. Super, super easy recoil to control. One of the easiest recoils of the full auto weapons in the game to control. Nice magazine size, nice damage, nice fire rate, nice reload speed. Just all around very, very solid pick. And I'm going to be comparing that to the FCAR. This thing for me is going to get a D tier. It's going to be in D tier probably on its own. And the reason for that is because the AKM is just quite simply better. It has a larger magazine size. It does the same amount of damage. It has a better fire rate. It's, it's just a better weapon. The only thing the FCAR really has going for it is that it's got a scope on the gun. And that's pretty much it. But um, I do think something needs to be done with this. I think it should probably get its damage buffed a bit, or it should get its magazine size upped. But as it stands, I think you're just going to be better off using the AKM. You run out of bullets in this thing really quickly, and the bullets do the same amount of damage as the AKM anyway. So unless you really, really want to scope on an assault rifle as a medium, you should probably just pick the AKM. I do think the FCER needs a little bit of a buff. So then we come to the CL40. Now I'm not sure where to put this. I'm probably going to put it in B. Again, grenade launcher, no multiplier, and it's kind of dependent on the verticality of your opponents, right? If you're up high and you're shooting at someone down below you, then it's going to be very, very useful. And if you're down below you and you're trying to shoot at someone up high, then it's not going to be so great unless they're in a building or something. So... This is kind of a situational weapon. It can be useful, that's why it's not in C or D. And it's not really overshadowed by anything, it's a good weapon on its own. So it's probably going to go in B, I might put it just behind the sword in B tier. And then we have the shotgun, the Model 1887. So again, it's a shotgun, no headshot multiplier. But this is a pretty solid weapon, you can really deal a lot of damage with this thing. And the nice thing about this is, with a lot of weapons you kind of have to stand out and shoot at your opponents and keep shooting them, keep shooting them. With this, you can, like, shoot and then duck and cover. And then pop back out again and shoot and duck and cover. And it's quite nice to be able to do that because a lot of your opponents will be trying to spray you. So sometimes you'll be able to get a shot or two in. They'll start reloading because they think you run away once you duck and cover. And then you can pop back out with the third shot and maybe get a kill. So it is quite useful. I also just personally really like the reload. I like you can put in the pellets inv individually. I quite like that. And it does have pretty good range for a shotgun. I don't think it's an A because it's a shotgun. It has its drawbacks, no headshot multiplier, bad range compared to the assault rifles anyway. But it is a solid pick. Then we have the revolver. Revolver is very, very good. One thing with it is that the iron sights are a bit tricky to get used to. But if you can get over that and you really master the iron sights this can be a very very good weapon especially if you can hit your headshots it just deletes people quite quickly it's only got six bullets in it but it does have a fast reload speed so that kind of makes up for it it is a little bit harder to use at closer range because obviously you can't spray enemies you just have to have quite good aim and be able to hit people up close and you can make this work at close range as well so just all around pretty a decent weapon if you can hit your shots then we have the riot shield which i think is going to be in quite a low B tier. And the reason for that is you're probably just going to be better off picking something else. It can be useful if you're playing defensively and you've got a team that's maybe playing very offensively. If you've got like a healing beam and a defibrillator and you just want to go all out defense or support, you can use this, but you know, it's not the best for offense. So then we come to the heavy weapons. I'm going to leave this grenade launcher till last, I think, and we'll start off with the flamethrower. Flamethrower is going to be high B tier, I think. It's very solid pick at close range. It can really make enemies panic, which is always a nice thing that, you know, you set them on fire and you're doing the damage that you're you're doing with it. 
And then you're also doing the fire damage additionally, which can be quite nice in a lot of scenarios. And it is also nice that it, it, it definitely does make enemies panic a bit, which can be helpful too. So next up we have the Lewis gun and the M60. I'm going to put these both in A, and that's because they both have their advantages and disadvantages, and you can just kind of pick whichever one you prefer here. They're both solid picks, and, you know, they both have headshot multipliers, that's why they're above most of these weapons. They're just, they're solid picks for the heavy build. Then we have the shotgun, the heavy shotgun. This is going to go in very, very high B tier. It's probably going to be first on the B tier. And that's because it absolutely destroys enemies if you can hit your shots with it up close. It is a bit gimmicky in that you can shoot four shots, wait a second, shoot four shots, wait a second. Um, so if you can get used to that, then, you know, it, it can be very, very, very damaging. It can take enemies out really quickly if you can hit your shots. You know what? No, I'm going to put that in A. That, that probably deserves A tier. It's, it's a very solid weapon. It's probably the best shotgun, I think. And then we have the Sledgehammer. This is going to either be very high B or low A. Um, I'm going to put it in very high B because, you know, it has no headshot multiplier, close range only. But this can one-shot lights. So if you can get up close to people, maybe if you pair it with the charge and slam to try and cover distance quickly, especially as a heavy, that can be quite hard. Not only can you one-shot lights, you can also destroy buildings really, really quickly with this. So it can be quite useful in a lot of situations. So it definitely deserves like high B, maybe even A somewhere, but I'm just going to leave it in B, I think. And then last but not least, we come to the MGL32. This is one of the few weapons I haven't unlocked, but this thing is pretty strong. I'm going to put it in, I'll put it in low B behind the sledgehammer and the flamethrower. So again, the thing with grenade launchers is they've got a kind of verticality gimmick to them. If you're up high shooting at someone down below, they become very, very powerful. If someone's like on a rooftop and you're on the ground, it can be quite hard to hit them. But also if someone's inside buildings, you can make the most out of this thing. So it can be quite good, but it does have its drawbacks and that's why it's going into B. So there you go. There's my tier list. I think I'm going to leave that there. It is worth noting that you can make... Most of these weapons work, except for the FCAR. You, you probably shouldn't be using the FCAR. That's the only one I would be a bit of a stickler on. But everything else, you can you can make work if you have the right map, the right team, and the right gadgets and abilities to pair it with. So, for example, for the grenade launchers, if the map has suspended structures on it, then this obviously becomes a lot more powerful for shooting at anyone that tries to come up to the suspended structures. If it's a map that has a lot of very close buildings in it, then, you know, something like the sword becomes a lot more useful where you can get to cover really quickly if you're, if you're in a bad situation. And you can also get towards people quite quickly because everyone's kind of huddled up most of the time. Then you can also pair stuff together to make them more effective, like the sledgehammer and charge and slam to cover that distance, or the sword and evasive dash to cover that distance. Or, you know, the sniper and invisibility or the sniper and grappler. You can compare stuff up to make them work more. And then it also depends on your team. So if you've got a team of three lights and two of them are running the XP-54 for longer ranges, then, you know, you can run the M11 for that closer range to be better at close range while they take the long range fights. So most of it is dependent. The only one I think here that is very, very weak is the FCAR. The M11 could even go in low B tier. I might actually just put it in the lowest B tier and <laughs> I'll keep the FCAR down here skipping a whole tier on its own. I, I do think something needs to be done with that weapon. But yeah, you can make mostly everything viable here if you want to. It just depends on the team, the map, the gadgets and the specialization that you are pairing your weapon with. So there you go. There's my tier list. If you have any thoughts on this in the comments down below, then let me know those. And if you want to see a different video like this, maybe one on gadgets or specializations or something, then also let me know that in the comments down below. Thank you for watching, ladies and gentlemen. That is going to be it for this video. If you liked it, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Farewell.